I will say that in our early days of AdNet Zero, it's been incredibly refreshing to see the diverse array of the types of companies that have gotten on board this important mission. But I have been blown away by the number of, let's call them bleeding edge, leading edge ad tech type companies that are really on the forefront of what is really one of the rapidly advancing areas of the entire advertising ecosystem, in particular digital media, and connecting all the various apertures and parts and pieces together into one continuous stream. And there are a lot of really amazing innovative companies out there. But this is also an important space for a different reason in that when you really look at where the carbon emissions fall, a lot of it falls in the digital part of the media mix. And so it's not really a surprise that so many ad tech companies, I guess, have stepped forward to try and you know, take the right kinds of actions and, and create the right journey in the roadmap ahead. But one, in, one company in particular that we're able to spend some time with here today is ShareThrough. And we're lucky to have the Chief Marketing Officer, Benoit, with us here today. And we want to hear a little bit about the journey that you've been on, the kinds of products and innovations that you've been driving forward, what the future looks like through your lens, and what you want to be saying when you're here next year as you look back on the year that is yet to come on some of the great steps forward that we can accomplish in terms of real tangible proof points and areas of progress that we can put forth. How's that sound? Good conversation? It sounds like a long question. It's a much and longer uh, question than it needed to be, Ben, and thank you for realizing <laughs> that. So let's go, let's go with the rapid fire round. So very, very quickly, tell us about Share Through yeah. and tell us how you're driving the sustainability movement forward in your space. Yeah, absolutely. So share through, we are one of the largest uh, global ad exchange, omnichannel ad exchange, and we've started working and putting energy and, uh, and, uh, and time and, and, and uh, investment uh, on sustainability uh, initiatives since maybe 18 months, 18 months ago. And uh, we started because we realized that by decreasing our infra cost, so as an ad exchange, we manage billions of impressions and ad requests uh, every day. And we realized by decreasing our infra cost, uh, we were also decreasing our carbon footprint. And so from there, uh, we started to think, okay, uh, what can we do as a company to reduce our own carbon emissions? And what can we do uh, also as an ad exchange to help brands and agencies or advertisers, let's say, let's say uh, run like low emission campaigns or even carbon neutral campaigns? And so as a company, uh, we started measuring our own carbon emissions. We're working with a, a partner for that that is called uh, 51 to Carbon Zero. They are the experts. They help us measure our own carbon emissions. Uh, and uh, taking actions, we're SBTI approved. Uh, we partner with AdNet Zero as well, um, and uh, and so basically, uh, and we we've, we've taken measure internally uh, to start lowering our own emissions, uh, like uh, travel policies and things like that. And with our clients uh, came that idea of what if we were able to deliver carbon neutral campaigns, started like that, carbon neutral campaigns at scale uh, without affecting negatively the performance of the campaigns and without changing the way media buyers are executing their campaigns. So that was the internal mandate. We started thinking about that. And last year, right before Cannes, uh, we were the first exchange to launch green media products. We launched the green PMPs, um, which now have been used by uh, more than 7,500 brands, which is a way for brands to deliver programmatic campaigns through private marketplace. Uh, so which basically us packaging inventory uh, by removing high emission websites. Uh, we are leveraging Scope 3 data for, uh, for, for that. The measure was really uh, important for us to get. And uh, compensating or not, depending on the brands, if they want to do it or not, uh, for the remaining carbon emissions. Uh, so that's what we've done. Over the last uh, few weeks, we've been a step further than that by allowing brands delivering a low emission PMP, so there is no compensation or offsetting in that, but by default, with no extra cost, we're curating the inventory by removing high emission websites and also removing, by default on PMPs, MFS sites as well, uh, which we're the first exchange to, to take that, uh, that decision. Sometimes I hear um, in the chatter out there in the world that sometimes when you s drive forward on sustainability, you sometimes compromise quality. Have you, what have you found in, 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 in your world at ShareThrough? 
So we've seen, uh, we've run many, many tests on all the, the campaigns delivered uh, and uh, using our sustainability product. And we've seen an increase in performance uh, for most of them. I can't say all of them, each campaigns are different, but the truth is when you clean the inventory and you remove uh, most of the time high emission websites are not, not the most qualified website as well. So the fact of cleaning uh, the inventory and curating the inventory efficiently allows you to deliver higher, uh, higher performance uh, for your campaigns. And the way we're do, trying to do it, uh, for example, with the MFS site removal on the PMP uh, side, is not to simply cut a source of inventory, is to start having like deep conversations with the sites that are generating too much carbon emission versus the average and help them because as an SSP, keep in mind that we're working with thousands of websites and apps, hundreds of publishers, and, we're try and that unlocks great conversations to help them lower their own carbon emissions. When we announced two weeks ago uh, that we were removing, starting July 1st, MFS site by default on all PMPs, green PMPs, not green PMPs, uh, we got publisher reaching out to us and telling us, okay, what should I do to be part of the game, you know? And I think that's very positive, in fact. So uh, it's a bold move, but positive move, I see. What's the biggest challenge in your world right now? We have many, you know, as every company is, but I would say, uh, same as uh, most of the people I've heard uh, today and uh, on the previous day, uh, education is really important. Uh, we've seen that uh, many companies, uh, they want to go and be more sustainable and they're, they're, they're ready to take actions, but they don't understand yet where they are at right now. You know? So we've run a research, we've surveyed 145 uh, industry leaders in, uh, in the US, and uh, so uh, agency, people, brands, etc. and we've asked them, okay, are you uh, committed at becoming net zero? And, um, and are you measuring your own carbon emissions? You know? And what's funny is we have more companies saying they're committed than companies measuring their emissions, which makes no sense, you know, because if you want... And, and strange that's how that happens, That's right? a problem. By the way, that's a problem because that means some of those companies might fail reaching their goals. So, uh, so, so but it, it's also a good signal uh, for us to say, okay, education has to be like very strong in our industry on that topic. And, uh, and I'm, I'm a bit scared of people starting to be tired at some point on the sustainability topic. You know, we live in our industry, uh, you're moving from one topic to another very, very quickly. And this one is quite important to stay on for a while. And it's your responsibility with a net zero. <laughs> no, Ben, it's our responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so a year from now, we're talking. Thank you for being honest about some of the real challenges and opportunities we're all facing. If there's one thing that can be done between now and then, what would that one thing be? One thing is, uh, it's tough. One thing is, uh, it's, not, it's not easy to answer, but okay, we have tons of meetings and, uh, and uh, round tables and things like that, and I think we, are all, we all want to do things right. Uh, we are learning as we go as well. One of the things I think is, uh, even if we need to work as groups, uh, there are some key actions that can be taken by like agencies and brands differently than DSPs, differently than SSPs, uh, because we have different impacts. Uh, you know, we can have an impact on the supply pass. Uh, agencies can have major impact on uh, f kind of forcing their partners uh, to becoming like, uh, I don't know, SBTI approved, for example. Absolutely. You know? So if each of those uh, groups can start working on initiatives that, that they can master, I think we'll make tons of progress. Yeah. yeah. And to your point about education and learning as we go, we're learning at Adna Zero too. One of the things we realized, it's not enough to say to a supporter, hey, tell us what you're going to do. We'll try and hold you accountable. We've got to add more teeth to that. So the news that we had this week was we're going to require disclosure of real science-based targets across all of our supporters. You just heard from Rob Rakowitz the important news this morning with the partnership with GARM. It is. It's partnership. It's the power of we. But we can't do it alone. We've got to rely on our friends. And together, collectively, we'll move this thing forward. We're so happy and pleased with your support Hopefully you feel it in return. We're pleased I that do. you're here with us today at the Beat Retreat. Yeah. 
and we wish you well. And All we'll right. be working uh, closely with you as we go forward. Thanks. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.